this ignited minds book in page on page 84 dr apj abdul kalam has told he went into deep meditation in the fall in which swami vivekananda stayed so that xerox copy i already have given this is the book take the number and, and we will order it and to have it in the, in the library yeah this book has been this is written by dr kalam president of india it has been translated into many languages of the world and also the millions of copies in this world his interaction with the students yeah. beautiful and he has dedicated this book he has dedicated this book to a young girl he went there he went there in anand in gujarat he was talking to the students he has got a habit of talking to the students and so she says written i dedicate this book to a child who is studying in class 12 her name is snehal thakkar on april 11 2002 april 11 2002 when i reached anand by road in the evening it was under curfew following communal disturbances mm-hmm. the next day at the anandala anandala high school while talking to the students a question came up who is our enemy <laughs> he asked all the students who is our enemy and many answers came there were many answers but the one we all agreed was correct came from her our enemy is poverty mm-hmm. she said our enemy is poverty yeah. <laughs> so all agree <laughs> it is the mon- it is the root cause of all problems and should be the object of our fight not our own and beautiful book and there he has written how he was talking to porbandar 3000 students and that is one place and one place how he went into deep meditation while meditating in swamiji's room in porbandar of course i had lot of talks with him um, during the car journey from rajkot to porbandar 3 hours only we two of us nobody else mm-hmm. only two of us and so he was very inquisitive in how he call it call about that uh, actually first of all i read his book india 2020 a vision of the new millennium that is the name of the book in which he says by 2020 india will become a developed country and will be super power mm-hmm. in fact i was going all over the country talking to the students and telling them that india will become great swami vivekananda has told india will become great they will not believe oh so much corruption so much poverty india cannot become great but he has given facts and figures how india is already on the top already number 1 in milk production number 2 in wheat production number 1 in remote sensing satellites america and india america and japan are also importing it is satellites from india space technology number 4 likewise so many facts and figures he has given economically it is becoming super power within 5 years so like that he has told within 2020 2020 india will become a developed country it will become great so i was very much interested so i wrote to him that i am very much happy to know that your views coincide with swamiji's views and we would like to invite you for inaugurating one of the school buildings then i telephoned him twice yeah. then uh, he said yes swamiji i'll come that time i was in delhi living in a small flat he had already retired as the principal secretary <coughs> to the prime minister he said swamiji i'll try then once or twice i tried then i left the home then i heard that he is coming to rajkot for a function of christ college on 25th december 2001 so i went to rajkot and sent a message that i have come to rajkot to meet you personally to invite you for a porbandar where should i meet you at the airport or somewhere else he sent the message swami ji you are a mom i should come to meet you i'll come at your house we were not prepared because he was very small time only half a day for half a day he had come to rajkot so we thought that he has no time so and on his way to airport he came to rajkot ashram they we welcome him showed him the exhibition that time the talk that i had it is at rajkot that swami ji can i not become a monk then i told him there are two types of flights that is that is that then we took him to the temple he is we were little hesitant he is a muslim so i said he is asked whether you would like to go to most temple yes sir i would like to as soon as we entered the temple rajkot ashram then he said swami ji can i sit down with the boys boys were our hostel boys were 
doing Khandana Bhavandana, evening Artrikam was going on. So he went there and sat down with the boys. We thought we'll be behind, it's a big hall. So and within two five minutes he has to go to the airport. But he went deep inside in front of the shrine and he sat down with the boys who were singing. And as soon as he sat down, he went to deep meditation. Now he's not getting up, and these security people, they are scolding us. What is this? You make him stand up. <laughs> we are getting late for the airport. What can you do? We asked him, but he's not getting up. Then our Swamiji shook up like this. Then he did like this. After 15 minutes, like this, and immediately he came up, came down, did not wear his shoes. He took the shoes in his hand and ran towards the car. And then sat down in the car and wore his shoes. Then uh, we asked him, what happened? You see, Swamiji, the music was divine. It entered into my ears. Then, then it entered into my heart. Then it entered into my soul. And he was lost. This is the word he used. I was lost. He did not use the word Samadhi. But he said, I was lost. Outside word. So, he didn't know so much time he spent. Then, uh, I told him, you have to come to Porbandar. We want to, you will inaugurate. For what? I said, you will inaugurate one of the school buildings constructed as part of earthquake rehabilitation project. We construct it one school building, one you will inaugurate. He said, okay, Samaj, I will try. Then I said, but, and we will invite 3,000 youths and you will talk to them. He said, Swamiji, I'll come. Then he became more enthusiastic. I knew <laughs> that he wants to meet the youths. Then again, I sent one or two reminders. And he said, Swamiji, I'm very busy. He's going all over the country at that time, meeting the youths. So I left the home. Suddenly, one fine morning, there was a telephone call. I'm Dr. Kalam. I want to talk to Swami Nikhilishwaran. I said, yes, give the line to Dr. Kalam. I am Swami Nikhilishwaran. I am Dr. Kalam speaking. <laughs> I thought his PA must be there. <laughs> I said, yes, Dr. Kalam, this is Swamiji, I am coming to Porbandar airport for going to Prasla, which is about 100 km from there. I said, then you must come to Porbandar Asam, it is pending. Yes, Swamiji, but there is only half an hour gap because the flight comes at 12.30 and 2.30 there is a program, so I must start within half an hour. I said, okay, we will make a small program, but you must come. Okay, Swamiji, I will try. Then left the phone. Then all the people were mad. Dr. <coughs> Kalam is coming. A yeah, big scientist. Bharat. Second day morning again the telephone call came. Swamiji, Dr. Kalam. He himself telephoned me. Swamiji, I am sorry. The flight times have changed. It is coming only at 1.30. So I will immediately proceed to Prasla. I think Swamiji, I will have to make some special program for you. I said, but in the meanwhile these people are dancing with joy. <laughs> and now they will become disappointed if you are not coming. What to do? He said, what to do? Uh, this is what has happened. Is there no morning flight, Swamiji? I said, no, only one flight from Bombay to Port Bandar. And suddenly something said, yes, but there is a morning flight from Bombay to Rajkot. If you come to Rajkot, we will arrange for your travel from Rajkot to Port Bandar. And before 12.30, we will release you. Okay, Swamiji, let me see, let me see. Then third day morning, again he telephoned, Swamiji, I am coming. <laughs> Swamiji, I am coming. You will arrange my travel from Rajkot to Prabhu. So, I uh, went on 12th February 2002, went to Rajkot. And morning 8 o'clock, 13th February, we started from Rajkot to Porbandar. Myself and Dr. Kalam, nobody else. And security, he had Z plus category. Very, I mean, secret. So, one security guard on the front and one driver. That's only four of us. So, a lot of talks. Then I gave him the details about rehabilitation project, Ramakrishna mission, what it is, what activities, how Purvandar was started, something I gave him. Then he started asking about Swami Vivekananda. Then I asked, why you are so eager? He said, you know, Swamiji, Swami Vivekananda was the first saint, I think, who converted religion into practical spirituality. That was his great regard. Then he said, Swamiji, tell me some inspiring incidents from Swamiji's life. Then I told him many incidents, including one at, Kak, at Almora, near Almora, a Muslim fakir had saved his life by giving a cucumber. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't know. Huh? And I said, and Swamiji, when he came back from America, yeah. he recognized him. 
and say this person has saved my life mm -hmm. and that grave is still there mm -hmm. and that graveyard is still there mm -hmm. oh, he was very much into it. I told him about Muhammad Sarfaraz Hussain who was from Nainital and Swami Vivekan wrote a letter to him and uh, he later on became Swami Muhammad Ananda he wrote under the name Swami Muhammad Ananda that also I say then said Swamiji please tell something about Ramakrishna some is, is Then I told about Ramakrishna, how he practiced Islam, Christianity, Hinduism. He didn't know so many. And I said, he said, all the religions are equally true. Yes, that is great. Then he said, Swamiji, tell something about Sardha Devi. He didn't know anything about Sardha Devi. Only he knew that uh, Sardha Devi is the consort of, I said, she is the mother of all. Then Amjad, Muslim dacoit, about yeah. Muslim dacoit I told. He was astonished. Like he is going on asking, he is so eager. Suddenly our car hit the ashram. <laughs> three hours gone, we didn't know. There is so much engrossed in talk. Three hours, 186 kilometers. Gone like this. And then uh, he went and um, he went to Samiji's room. And there, he was, there also lost in meditation. He is not getting up and he is getting late for the function. So somehow we made him to get up. Then he took little snacks. Then drove immediately to the... Bhauseji High School, uh, the Vivekan High, Vidya Mandir, which he inaugurated. That all the details you will get. How he inaugurated. Then there were 3,000 youths, very powerful speech he gave. Oh, 3,000 youths. And all were so enthusiastic, bubbling with joy. You will see in the city, all the students bubbling with joy and enthusiasm. And then they asked, What is the source of inspiration? Then Dr. Kalam said, Normally, I do not leak out my secret, but this is the right place to leak out my secret. <laughs> then he said, I was the monitor of my school. I was studying in 7th standard. And uh, my headmaster called me. He said, today you call all the students. And uh, in midnight, you listen to the running commentary. 14th August 1947, India will become independent. And you have to listen to the running commentary. So he said, I brought all the students and then we listened to the commentary. We were very happy uh, to listen to the commentary. Uh, the next day morning, I saw two photographs in the newspaper. The first photograph, the Prime Minister, first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, hoisting the Indian flag and the British flag coming down. We were very happy to see that photograph. By that side, there was a second photograph. And Dr. Kalam said, that second photograph was my primary education, was my secondary education, was my college education, and was my life education. And what was that photograph? That photograph was showing me the time at which the whole nation was enjoying was celebrating the independence of India. The person who made this possible singularly by his greatest sacrifice, that person was walking barefooted in the streets of Noakali, wiping the tears of the afflicted people. He said, this is the nobility of leadership. He didn't accept any power or position. He could have become the first Prime Minister of India. No. Not only that, when all were enjoying and celebrating, he was still along with the poor and the afflicted people fighting the tears. I said, this is the nobility of leadership. Sacrifice, mm -hmm. sacrifice, sacrifice for the, for the poor. So that he said was my source of inspiration. And this is the, I leak out the secret because this is the birthplace of Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. Yeah. Then very nice speech. You can listen to that speech in the CD. Then he went to Mahatma Gandhi's birthplace and then came to our ashrama, had nice lunch, very polite. Mm -hmm. Even with the servants, he is talking like, oh, no, 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 please, please do not give like this, like that. Such a humble person. Mm -hmm. Then, afterwards he left for Prasla. In the evening, now, there was, in Varanasi, there was centenary celebration going on. So I had to go and give a speech there. I postponed, I had my train journey, I had cancelled because of his coming. So I went by plane. So on the same day in the evening, I went from Rajkot to Mumbai by plane 
and he was also going by Rajkot to Mumbai by plane for catching a flight to Chennai and I was to catch the flight to Benares. As soon as Swami in the airplane, Swamiji, you are going with the same flight. Swamiji, I want to sit near you, <laughs> like a small child. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, okay, I'll come to you. No, Swamiji, you are more, I should come to you. Oh. Then I told the other man, who oh, is yeah. Abdul Kalam, yeah. great scientist, uh, he wants to say, please go to his seat. Then he came and said, oh, Swamiji, morning, we had nice thoughts. Please tell something more about Swamiji, Vivekana. <laughs> then again I talked, so many things. And within 40 minutes, so many things he asked about Thakur Ma Swamiji. Within 40 minutes, the flight, the, we judged the airport movement. Swamiji, unfortunately, Bombay has come so quickly. <laughs> I wanted to listen to you so many thought, talks. Swamiji, this is one of the greatest days of my life. He said, this is the one of the greatest days of my life. I heard so many good things about so great saints. Mm -hmm. Then we departed. Swami, I have one question. When um, this uh, sir was the first time in the temple and was lost, did he get afterwards his plane? Did he get it? Yeah, he got the plane. Yeah, he got the plane? He got the plane. Oh, yeah. He got, he got the plane. Ah. He got the plane. Because after 15, 10, 10 minutes, yeah. only 10, 15 minutes, we shook him like that. Ah, yeah. Otherwise, he would have lost the plane. So, had we not shaken him, <laughs> the whole Khandan Bhagavad had it completed. By that time, the plane would have left. <laughs> then, uh, after that, uh, this is there. In the public speech, I had told, he is not Bharat Ratna. He is a Vishwa Ratna. You will find in my speech. And I said, he is going to become great. These things I told because I could see the genuinity of the people, person. Within three months, it was declared that he will become the president of India. In the newspaper it came, because he was nominated, everybody was sure, election was just for the namesake and he will become president. So the day his name was proposed as the president, I was so happy to read the newspaper. So second day itself, I telephoned him. I used to telephone sometimes. He was in Chennai, Anna University. And whenever I used to telephone, he used to say, Swamiji, that day I was lost in meditation. I was lost. That is the word he used to say. I was lost. <laughs> Every time. So I, I uh, telephoned him because I thought after he become president, then his uh, secretary would not allow me to talk. <laughs> there will be so many president of India. So uh, I, told, I telephoned. He came all the way to the guest house when he heard that I have telephoned to pick up my phone. Yes, Swami. I said, Dr. Kalam, please accept our hearty congratulations in advance. I thought I must give you advance congratulations because after, <coughs> after you become president, you will become inaccessible. <laughs> no, Swamiji, not for you, Swamiji. <laughs> very simple, childish, not for you, Swamiji. I said, uh, we are very happy that such a great person like you is coming in the right place. And this one, I be now foresee a great future of India, Swami Vivekananda prophesied. No, thank you, Swamiji, thank you. And then he said, Swamiji, you will not believe. Yesterday only I remembered you. Then he said, yesterday the name was announced. So immediately all the press reporters came to take my interview from all over the world. And they asked me, what is your message for the nation? And I said, I have to give the same message that I gave at Porbandar. <laughs> The, I have to give the same message that I gave at Porvandar. So he said, I remember you. I am Porvandar. I am coming from Porvandar. So he said, I have to give you the same message that I gave at Porvandar. Then he said, Swamiji, when you are giving both of thanks, you do not know a young girl had smuggled into the dyers. That I, I saw afterwards. You will also see that in the CD. Small young girl. I smuggled into them in spite of the security and she took the autograph and then asked what is your message then Dr. Kalam said my dear daughter you will grow with the idea that nation is more important than the individual and he said Dr. Kalam told all the press reporters this is my message for the nation today what I gave at Port Bandar. So he said, he told me what phone, Swami, yesterday when I remembered you, I have not forgotten you. <laughs> then uh, next day I saw, yes, really, in the magazine it was written. The whole, whole uh, interview had come where he had told, I have to give the same message that I gave to 3000 youths in Port mm -hmm. He had told, he has mentioned that Port So afterwards, uh, 
when he became the president of India, then I gave him a congratulation letter, of congratulation. In that letter, I wrote that Swami Vivekananda had written to Muhammad Sarfaraz Hussain, who later became Swami Muhammad Ananda, that for our nation, what is wanted is a Vedantic brain with an Islamic yes. body, mm. meaning thereby a social structure like Islam, universal uh, uh, brotherhood, and philosophy of Vedanta. But I said, but I said, and it is a strange coincidence that an Islamic body with a Vedantic brain is now in the top position of the country. <laughs> the coincidence. <laughs> then he gave a very small, simple, he was very busy. He gave a very small one line, Swamiji, I appreciate your comments. He gave the email back to me, reply. Then, uh, 16th April last year, I went to meet him at Rashtrapati Bhavan. Just a, I took that CD that I had prepared to give that CD and this CD and also I took a bouquet of flowers, Swami Vivekananda's big photograph and uh, one book of Swami Vivekananda and this is some prasad I took. When, as soon as I went there, Swamiji, you brought so many things for me. Like the small child is actually. Then I said, what can I bring for you? I am a fakir coming to meet an emperor. <laughs> <laughs> Like Sudama, I have come from Sudama Puri to meet an emperor. What can I bring for you? Immediately say, Swamiji, only one emperor, Swamiji. We are servants of the same emperor. That's a very sweetly said. Only one emperor, Swamiji. We are servants of the same emperor. You see how, what faith he has got in God. And how such, even after becoming president, so simple and so humble. And he was just sitting in a small, just like that uh, ordinary table and chair, where, uh, just just like this, ordinary suit, just like, uh, ordinary person. And then, uh, and then we had a lot of talks. I said, I have brought this VCD and this and that, and people are very happy that you have become president. Yes, I am also, I was very happy to meet Purban. I say, you must come. Oh, yes, I must come. I will come. I also want to come. <coughs> then, uh, then we told, if you, I, that I told yesterday, even if you bring the wealth of the whole world bank, it will not remove poverty because there is so much corruption. Yes, Swamiji, what to do? I said, what you are doing, you should continue and we are also doing. That is meeting the youths and trying to reorient youths towards value education and build their character. When they become in position, they will be able to save the country. He said, yes, Swamiji. Then I said, we, have, we are starting Vivekanand Institute of Value Education and Culture in Porbandar. I gave the details. He was very happy. He said, Swamiji, I, I want to come to Porbandar. I said, you must come. Again, when I come, Swamiji, I am coming to Porbandar. <laughs> Again, he said. Then I wrote to him. We wanted to invite him for 12 January. But that day, he got involved somewhere else. Naturally, as a president, he has got a lot of this one. So, he couldn't come. But he has got a great desire of coming. So, he may come. But we are also thinking, we must make a big occasion. 12 January, Swami Vivekan birthday. So we naturally have we big youth convention. We can invite thousands of youths. Then it is what? President of India coming. It has to be a big event. It requires a lot of preparations for us also. Yeah. That time he was only scientist. It's okay. Yes. But now we have to have a lot of paraphernalia to undergo and all that. But anyway, a lot of talks. So this is the book written by him in on page 84. He has given that remark that you can see and uh, then uh, I have given, yeah, one book I have given that is my sovereign and this is a book also I am giving here, a beautiful book that you can read, Practice on the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence, beautiful small book, everyone should read it. Brother Lawrence, as you know, was a, car a monk of the Carmelite order, 16th century. 16th century, Carmelite order. He was in the army. His leg was operated. So he could not do any other work. So he was given kitchen work. Now, whole life he passed in kitchen. Now, he said, I when I went to prayer, I could not get much devotion. But what he started doing is, he started conversing with God. Oh Lord, today there is no chili powder, what to do? <laughs> like that, he is talking with God, everything. Oh, this is God, I have to get so many guests. Oh God, if you give me power, then only I can give you. I have got only one leg. Oh Lord, this one. Everything is just conversing with God, 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 all the time, 24 hours. 
and he said afterwards he wrote here he is written here that in the beginning it was difficult for me to remember him now it became equally difficult for me to forget him all the 24 hours it became a habit for him so practice of the presence of god later on and his beautiful letters wonderful letters we have it in germany you have in, in german, german have it. in german yeah. language here no ich habe ja auch gesagt ich habe es gut gemacht aber nicht He says that he had gone to into a monastery, hoping that he would be sacrificed for his awkwardness and for the mistakes he would make, and thus offer up his life and his happiness to God. But God had disappointed him, for he had found nothing but contentment, which made him often say to him, "Lord, you have duped me." <laughs> Because I came here, here in order to get suffering, and you are giving me joy, joy, and joy. You are duped me. You see the the simplicity of the saint. Just by working in the kitchen, he became a great saint. Just working in kitchen, nothing else. He did not give any sermon. He was not this one. Just by talking to God, talking inside, and he said it was his use is. During kitchen or during working, he was nearer to God than when he was in the chapel. It became such a great habit for him. Beautiful. That he was more united with God during his ordinary activities than in religious exercises, in which he was generally afflicted with spiritual dryness. <laughs> Any beautiful letters are also there. That we ought not to get tired of doing little things for the love of God, because He looks at the love rather than the work. And we need not be surprised at our frequent failures at first. The time will come when we will shall make our acts naturally and with gladness. that he found the best way of reaching god was through those ordinary occupations which he received under obedience doing them for the love of god and with as little regard for human respect as possible that it was a great delusion to imagine that prayer time should be different from any other for we are equally bound to be united to god by work at work time as by prayer at prayer time so we should be 24 hours united with god there should not be water tight compartment this time is for prayer and meditation this time for work no nothing is work every work is worship beautiful small book you will like it very much practice of the presence of god uh, is, there are some books in christian literature which are very good one is the imitation of christ which swami vivekananda used to carry by thomas akempis Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence, and there is another book, The Way of a Pilgrim, by Russian. Yeah. The Way of a Pilgrim, yeah. Yeah. beautiful book, Eastern Orthodox Church. Yes. Where um, this a pilgrim, a Russian pilgrim, mm -hmm. is going only with it, only next step in the back, and uh, he has lost his wife, he has lost his, he is nowhere, his house is gone, nowhere, just a, like a wandering monk he is going, and then he. listens to the reading of bible where it's told you must pray without ceasing then he strikes how can we do prayer pray without ceasing we have to sleep we have to take food how can do without prayer with he asks many fathers they cannot answer then he went to a, one another one old father ultimately he told him yes he gave the, this one then he gave him a mantra oh lord jesus have mercy on me and told him to repeat so he went in solitude and started repeating it was very difficult for him to repeat slowly 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 started to repeat oh lord jesus have mercy on me oh lord jesus have mercy on me later on became a habit and then it became such a habit with every heartbeat 
is first with every breath yes. and then later on with every heartbeat the automatically the mantra is coming out oh lord just have mercy on me oh lord just have mercy on me this is the practice japam japam what we call japam they call prayer interior <coughs> prayer of jesus christ interior prayer that's and then it became a that's beautiful that's then what all experiences he had spiritual experiences how he met with experience these that how his faith was unshaken sometimes shaken then god made him to come in the path beautiful story you enjoy but main thing is that emphasis on japam there he says on taking the name of the lord try to do japam all the time It's practice 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 again we forget again we have to do again we have to practice again to we have to do so that way ultimately uh, it helps it becomes a habit then it becomes easier in the beginning it becomes difficult but we have to go on trying trying there's a beautiful book the way of a pilgrim so it was wonderful to stay here i enjoyed my stay uh, so many nice devotees here huh very nice devotees very nice devotees and a beautiful atmosphere here the shrine wonderful atmosphere the shrine and wonderful outside you live i feel like mayavati you know mayavati in himalayas we have got an ashrama so we will can start it all around trees and silence do you no. think swami parshananda will enjoy it yes you are sure yeah. <laughs> he will not be bored <laughs> <laughs> no no he is a great monk he is also a great monk he is jo jun he is little bit junior to me but he was my colleague we both have both were in the same training center together nice person and he is a scholar he can enjoy his reading also here also he can go deeper into his studies also Yes, and there is not feel alone in this house even if you are alone for few days so many know. books are there <laughs> the atmosphere but does not feel alone so but he will not be alone we no. will be and then uh, this university is nearby one university nearby yes. and that heidelberg so, university uh, that professor mm -hmm. uh, you have wrote, written down the name you been contact so yes. with through him you can enter but here are five five universities within 2 hours Yeah. So one, one yeah. to the north, one so to the south. So when you you get get in contact with universities, then he can go to universities. Like that will keep him engaged. And we are already getting invitation from our members who do some uh, and, and who are living a little bit far away. Seminars, uh, yeah. To to do a seminar there in the yoga school or with a doctor. It's <coughs> very good. School. Yeah, yeah, very good. It's very. Good. So, it will become autumn until he comes isn't it huh? it will become autumn or to take it will take 3 4 months it will take 3 4 months i don't know we, we don't we don't know we never did so we never invited to monk <laughs> <laughs> so we have to do this um, this uh, staying permit for him yeah. until now we do not know what name will be in the passport the date and the place of the birth if we have this then we can go to our lawyer and and to fill up the form and uh, what you get in touch with a relevant authority yes yes we uh, we phone yeah. with swami uh, smarana mm -hmm. we had we, we get in touch with him and get all the details what the calcutta consulate i think he will get through the uh, work done through the german consulate in calcutta yeah yeah and then they we have to know their requirements what requirements the consulate yeah needs mm -hmm. from what we have to send from here Yeah, I think they will work out and they will send you some papers to be signed. That's all. Yes, yes. They will find out from the consulate general for Calcutta if anything is needed from this end, and they will be able to send. Six months, Mahan Nanda is looking after it, yes. and uh, he will take contact. So. Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Yes, our phone number even and email and. The last letter it was written. Perhaps the consulate work should be done in Chennai. Because he should have to make his passport. Two years in that yeah. place. Mm -hmm. yeah. That he has to go. He that he will get the certificate. Yeah, Don't worry no about problem. it. It's very easy there. You see, there we have so many devotees, yeah. so many every, so many influence. We have got so much influence on yes. top persons. It just one telephone is enough. 
Yeah, what telephone call is it? Well, one thing about our, our president, I read it in Calcutta this time that he is doing uh, every day job on the Gayatri Mantra. Who? President. What is it? Dr. Kalam. Yeah, yeah. He was an interview. Yeah, yeah. What is your power? He reads Gita every day. He, he reads Quran. Yeah. He does Namaz. Yeah. And it is Gayatri Mantra. Gayatri Mantra. So it's an ideal combination for India. Yeah. Vedantic brain with Islamic body. <laughs> what Swami Vivekan prophesies has come true. <laughs> in in, in uh, the south of India, Kanyakumari, every, every uh, day in the morning, early in the morning when the sun is uh, coming, yeah, yeah. Gayatri Mantra, Mantra. So many people uh, come, yeah. came, come, yeah. and uh, the music is. Uh, you can hear it, yeah. uh, Gayatri Mantra. Ah. Om Bhuva Bhuva Swaha. <laughs> you should have been born in India. By mistake, you are born in Germany. <laughs> Sachidananda. <laughs> you did not see the films he has done. Eh? He has constructed a film. <laughs> you, 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 you tell yourself what film it was in Berlin. In Berlin. In Berlin. Oh. With him, ah, with so. him. He went to Berlin and he, there is this big um, gate which was closed before, now it is open. And he fixed a picture of Vivekananda to that gate. Huh? In, in, Berlin. Berlin. in Berlin. In Berlin. <laughs> and then he filmed this. And it was, it is for, forbidden. One cannot <laughs> do <laughs> any... Uh, <laughs> ...reklame. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put well, anything right. on, the, on the wall. Yet. Yeah. 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 Then? Then the uh, police came on and told him, you are not allowed, you are not allowed. But he had his picture. So <laughs> 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 This gate, yeah. there is a big chariot. Yeah. So and yeah. the, below the gate, there was a, a big uh, car coming with a, 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 a very f famous lady, a very high class, blue blood. I yeah. do not know, Großherzogin. Uh, so and a lot of people. And then he has constructed a story about it, uh, giving this chariot that was uh, the chariot of, of Krish, uh, Arjuna. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then he was talking, uh, telling the story of Arjuna and Krishna by showing the chariot on the top of that gate. And later on, this um, big car down <laughs> below. Um, Beneath the, the gate with this uh, noble lady, and he said, Oh, that was uh, Sita, she has been taken away by her. <laughs> 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 so, Sita, taken away by Ramana. So, everything. Then he went into a, in, into a restaurant. And then he went into the kitchen, and also he uh, combined it with, with Indian uh, thought and, and Indian uh, history, uh, mythology. 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 So, so you, did, you are not taken by police in the custody? <laughs> <laughs> Where is that photograph? Hmm? That a film. It's 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 a simple, simple. simple. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is not it. And we love it. Yes, Swamiji, it was very, very beautiful and encouraging weekend for us. Uh, I also very much enjoyed my trip. Very nice trip. All thanks to Bhogi Bhai. Because Binbai was not my agenda. It is he who told me <coughs> that when we are going to Germany. <laughs> I have no idea about Binbai. I told uh, Germany what I will see. I will see what all the places the Swamiji visited. That's all. That is my choice. And we will see the country. Then he said, Born and Colon, I will show you. Then he said, Binbai also we can go. Uh, then. Uh, Meanwhile, I know this one. Afterwards, when I learned that Banishan is coming, okay, I said, then let us go. I can tell him afterwards. I can tease him. <laughs> I want to, before you, I want to <laughs> I can tease him. <laughs> so that's why I said, okay, let us go to Binwai. 
But I didn't know that there will be so many people and there will be so much of joy and so much of singing and so much of meditation. <laughs> All this I thought I will be just uh, seeing the place and going. But I didn't <laughs> expect so many people. But we are not so many. You can see next weekend we are also about 25 people, but 25 different people. Some of us will be there, but not all. So, uh, different. It, uh, so there are many other devotees. Uh, two weeks ago with Swami Amananda, there were also uh, uh, such amount of people, but different. So, it is, uh, they cannot come every week or every second, but it is changing. So. Yeah. Uh, an amount of 25, 25. <coughs> Because every retreat has its own character. Yeah. So then people also, some people like this type of retreats, other like that about the group, the, the about six, seven people are always common. They come to most of the retreats. That's yeah. the poor group. Yes, it's the hardcore. <laughs> hardcore. But you cannot escape also, no? He wants to be there. <laughs> because the man has to, someone has to take the responsibility. Yeah. And every association needs a hardcore. Yeah. 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 No, the, the vibrations are very good. Yes. The place is very vibrant. The vibrations are good in the temple. When you try to sit down in the shrine, you can get energized. And, and outside environment is very good. You just, you when, as soon as you enter this area, you get freshened up. Not coming here. But as soon as you enter that new, that nearby area, there's some other feeling you get. Some nice, cool breeze and, and so many greenery around and so many high trees, forest. But even our neighbors, they remark, they told one, uh, the neighbor lady, she once told us, when the people are coming on Friday evening, they are all a little bit nervous and, and tired, and what are you doing on Sunday they, when they are going? They are all so happy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there the whole weekend? You didn't tell that the old man is doing, we are not doing that old man, we are that man. He is making all miracles. <laughs> he is doing such miracles that all become filled of joy. Yeah. Here the water tastes better, here the tea tastes better, everything we say the water is better than anywhere else, yeah. <laughs> Mother's grace is also here. Yes. Mother's grace. Yes. Ma Sharda Devi. Ma Sharda Devi is there. So it is good, 150th birth anniversary of Sharda Devi brings one Swami for you as a gift from India. <laughs> Mother is so gracious. Yeah. It's a very, very historical year. Swami Mahash Arda's 150th birth anniversary celebration is going around the world. At that time, you are getting a gift of a Swami from India. It is celebrated the whole year. Yeah. So we can still do something. Yeah, you must celebrate. We have, have to do something. 150th birth anniversary of Sharda Devi, you must celebrate. Yes. Yeah. You must celebrate. Up to 5th June, it, up to 3rd June, it will go on. Uh, 3rd January. Up to 3rd January 2005. Yes. Yeah. Year. Next birthday is yes. 152nd birth anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Last year was 151st birth, birth uh, Tithi Puja. Yeah. But, so it is 150th birth anniversary celebration. Yeah. Now up to 5th of January 2005. Also in India, is, uh, the celebrations are going yes. on. Yeah, it's going yes. on. We also had. You open the internet yes. to see it. Yeah. So many. So yeah. many. In yeah. we yeah. Also I got a CD for that. <coughs> Very good drama. Four holy mother's things. Uh, special drama group came from that is in Hindi. That in Hindi, but at least there are so many songs and so many uh, yeah. things up there you can see. It's been nice to see, yes. There, you see this uh, 150th birthday in Poor Bangal, we had these two phases. Now the third phase will come. Chennai had a lot of very big celebration, Rathod serve and all that, everywhere. Now, Belumat will have, the concluding will be Delumat. Second, third, second to fifth of January 2005. There will be gala celebration in Belmont of headquarters. That is the end. Mm -hmm. So before that you can have a celebration. Yes. Holy Mother's. So, <coughs> would you suggest that we wait until Swami Bandeshananda comes and yeah, yeah, together yeah. with him? We should. Yeah, when we he should. comes you celebrate. Then yeah. we will it's very nice. Yeah. You 
when you house that you sell it, that will be better. Oh, then you must yeah. try. You wanted it to ask something? It was mm-hmm. more to send you later, appointment later, and then you can set at least the course. That is one, one important question. Uh, how can we take direct contact to him? And when it is when it is the right moment to take a direct contact to him. Until now, we did not contact him. We only got we got the letter from Swami Smarananda that we are getting the Swami, we are getting affiliated, and his name is uh, Swami Baneshananda. But we do not have any direct contact with him. So, what is your advice to do? And should we contact him? Contact him. And how? And when? <laughs> You can easily contact him, there is no problem. Now that your official communication has already come, yes. so no problem. We write an email? Yes, you write an email at the care of. To Velumat address. To Velumat address. An email address. We you write to Balish Ananji that we have, we have got a letter from Smani Swarnanji and we are very happy and we are eagerly awaiting your arrival. When are you coming? Yes. 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 Then yes. the yes. correspondence will start. Yes. Then you will write that. Thank you. That is Ah, you start. <laughs> did you send the letter? <laughs> really, did you send the letter? From sponsor letter from here? Not yet. No. no because because he needs to get the visa yes, but we we need uh, to to send this letter. We need his name, which is in the passport, well, his date, and place of birth. We can also ask in the email. Yeah. Before the passport comes, you said you only this much. Number one that we have received communication from Sornanaji, we are extremely happy and all of us are very eagerly awaiting your arrival and please let us know what are the procedures to be done from our end. Yes. That's so. Yes. So then he will inquire in the headquarter yes. office and he will say you bring sponsor and prayer, these, these, this, everything he will do. And also you write to Sornanaji also. Have you written? Yes. 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 That we are happy to we know. We have written, yes. we have phoned with him. We have, we have had our board's meeting. Hmm. We have written an email. Next hmm. day, half of the board was here. Then we phoned to Swami Swamananda. That we are very happy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. yes. Very good. So that work has been done. Now you write to Ganesh also. Okay. That's hmm. to be done. That can be done. Chief. That can be done. Yeah, General Secretary Mahal also wrote in his reply that you wait. We will inform you as soon as we know the details. What all papers we uh, want from you. Yeah. We must be now consulting the Consulate General mm. in, of Germany in Calcutta. Yes. You are right. Yes, but and they will be getting the details. The passport must be made at Chennai because mm. Swami Banishananji uh, uh, is has been staying for the last two years in Chennai. In Chennai. So the rule is the place where you have been staying for the last two years, that very place has to give you the passport. Six months. I see. So that's why he has gone from, he had come to Belumat, he had gone to Kashi, then he came back and gone back to Chennai. Chennai. Now we'll write the email. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, so, I'm also happy to meet you. When you come to India, we shall meet. You are coming to India? <laughs> mother knows divine mother knows divine mother knows divine mother knows it shakali tomar ichha ichha mai tara tumi tomar karma tumi karo loke bole kori ami everything divine mother wish whatever he wish she wishes me to isn't it so you have got a very good philosophy, highest philosophy, divine will, <coughs> all happens by mother of will, mother's will, divine mother. High court. <laughs> yes, she is the high court. <laughs> you know Chota Nagin? <coughs> Chota Nagin story? <laughs> high court. There is one more high, there, there is another high court also. That is, when there was a plague in Bengal, very severe plague. Swami Vivekananda was in Darjeeling. When he heard that the whole Calcutta is getting vacated, he immediately came back from, he was not in good health. Still he came back from Darjeeling and immediately started the relief work with Nivedita and all that. And uh, he uh, gave a manifesto. Uh, he brought out the leaflets, don't fly, we are, don't run away, we are with you. And, uh, 
uh, don't uh, run away and uh, we, we have started relief work, we will continue our relief work and all that. And the brother disciples said, Swamiji, you have told already, you have published the leaflet that you will carry out relief work, but there is no money. Then Swami said, what do you mean? If there is no money, you see, people are suffering. I cannot see them suffering. You see, we are monks. We can stay under a tree. We have purchased this land for Belumar. Yeah. If necessary, we will sell it. And then get the money. When the brother Jitabas heard, they were very much worried. After 12 years of struggle, <coughs> somehow this purchase, this land has been purchased where Sri Ramakrishna's relics will be put and the dream will be fulfilled and that is going to be the headquarters of Ramakrishna Martin Mission and if that is not done, whole Ramakrishna Mission gone. They, but they can't think anything because Swami Vivekananda is Shiva Avatar. He is like Shiva. When he becomes Asutosh, he will bless. And when he becomes Vindra Sabu, nobody can go near him. Nobody has the courage to go near him. So what to do? Then go to the High Court. He went to Holy Mother Shargavi. Mother, we have heard like this and uh, he, we don't know. He may even sell over the land. Necessary. Then Holy Mother said, okay, call Naren. Then she asked Naren, I heard that yeah, you are thinking of selling the land. Yes, Mother, I cannot see that people are suffering very much. And so I have started the relief work. The money is not coming. So if necessary, I have thought that we will sell the land because I cannot see the people suffering. Then Mother said, Naren, I can really appreciate your great heart, your feeling for the people. That's great, very good. But my dear son, you are all monks who have been trained by Sri Ramakrishna himself. You can live under a tree. But you know, this Ramakrishna mission is not for today. It is for hundreds, thousands of years. And many more boys will come to become monks who will not be able to do austerity like you. You know, he, she knew Nikhileshwaran will come and he will need a lot of food to eat, time to time, and good nice place to stay. Uh, he will not be able to stay in, for in tree. Everything his mother knew that persons like me will come. They would require good facilities. Otherwise, they will not be able to become home. So, she said, my many other sons will come. They will not be able to do ostrich like you. They will require a place to sleep. They will require some good ashrama. So, this is not only for three years. And then she said, you are talking about one relief. Ram Krishna mission, through Ram Krishna mission, thousands of relief work will be done. Hundreds of relief work will be done. And now you see, really, after that, hundreds of relief work have been done, including the earthquake relief. Holy Mother's words have come true. Then she said another thing. Now you know, Sri Ramakrishna used to say, Sharda is Saraswati, Goddess of Learning. We start smiling. <laughs> Goddess of Learning Saraswati and she does not know how to write her name. Yeah. When a money order comes, she has to give a thumb impression. Angutha chap. Thumb impression. And she, and Sri Ramakrishna says that <laughs> she is the mother of the universe, Goddess of Saraswati, Goddess of Learning. <laughs> So, we feel, we, 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 uh, we feel uh, very much astonished how Sri Ramakrishna said. But if you look to life, incidents, small, small incidents, oh, she is really tremendous wisdom. Not only SQ, spiritual quotient of course, but EQ and IQ also. Tremendous. All the three are there with you. Great wisdom. Holy Mother Saradari. There, I have given one CD, one CD I have given to you, VCD based on the management seminar that we had in connection with 150th birth anniversary of Ma Sharda Devi. That was on 21st December 2004. And that was uh, 2003. And that was practical Vedanta and modern management. And there I have given how Holy Mother is giving the advice on management. Her advice is so important for management in every life. I have given them. Practical wisdom she had. Tremendous. So, Look at the wisdom. Sharda Devi, after telling this to Narayan Swamiji, he said, Acha Narayan, uh, this land, uh, uh, who is the owner of this land? To whom this belong, land belongs to? Then Swamiji said, Mother, I have purchased this land in the name of the trust. Oh, it is the land of the trust. And have you considered the other trustees before? Then Swamiji said, 
No, I am not consulted. Said, How can you sell the land which does not belong to you? It belongs to the trust. You must consult the other trustees. And I have considered the other trustees. They came to me and they don't want to sell the land. <laughs> because Swami Shardhanand and others, they had already come to other. He said, they have, they have already considered that they don't want to sell. How can you sell the land? <laughs> Swami had to bow down. Yes, Mother. Whatever you sell. Afterwards, of course, donation came and the relief work was going on. But this shows Holy Mother's power. She was the High Court. She says, finally, Swami Vivekan does not do anything. For he, he had to go to Chicago Parliament Religious, but he was not able to decide. He was in two minds. Once they collected some money, he told, you distribute among the beggars. If there is a divine will, then only I will go. Then he had a vision also when Sri Ramakrishna was calling him. Narendra come over the ocean. Then he became, yes, yes, Sri Ramakrishna will But still he was not able to make a final decision. So he wrote a letter to Sardhati. And when Sardha Devi wrote, yes, my dear son, it is the will of Sri Ramakrishna, because she had also the same vision of Sri Ramakrishna, calling him Narendra. She said, yes, it is the will of the Lord that you should go to America. When that letter was received by Swami Vivekananda, he started dancing with the letter. Oh, mother's, mother's permission has come, I am going. Mother's permission has come, I am going to America. Then he, she took final decision of America. So for Swami Vivekananda, Sharda Devi is final, Supreme Court. Supreme Court. When, whatever she says, final. No more argument. Before Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Vivekan used to argue very much. But before Sharda Devi, <laughs> nothing. Whatever she says, no argument there. Final. Divine, Divine Mother has got tremendous power. Sharda Devi. So that is Sharda Devi. High Court or Supreme Court, whatever you may call it. But the art pool, that is also the famous place for... That is the birthplace of Swami Premanandji. Premanandji was born there and there art pool is a historical place because on 24th of December, Christmas Eve, 1886, Swami Vivekananda and his Guru Vais had gone there for excursion and on 24th December, they were in a different mood, say, so they had a dhuni a fire, wood fire, and they sat down and suddenly Swami Vivekan started telling something about Christ, great sacrifice and renunciation of Christ and all that. And they decided, we will also like Christ, not go back to home and we will become monks. Second day they found out it was a Christmas Eve. So that is why... Premananda's mother invited them. Yeah, Premananda's mother invited them. And so they had gone there for a few days, but on they did not know that it was Christmas Eve. But it, it was a coincidence that on 24 December, Swami Vivekan suddenly started talking about Christ. And later on, second day, they discovered it was a Christmas Eve. And so that is why in many of our ashramas, Christmas Eve is celebrated on a grand manner. Because that day, the first monks of Ramakrishna order took up their vows of sannyasa. Though the virjahum was not done, but they, they, they took up the vows. No, we will not go back to our houses. We will become monks. As per the instruction of Sri Ramakrishna. That is, that is the historical occasion at Artpur, 24 December 1886.